Okay, so this one is how to solve the second moment of area. And this time we're going to look at a uh, symmetrical I-beam. So, we have an I-beam which is 50, is the top flange, by 70 overall. And each of our little flanges has got 10, and our immediate section is 20. So, what we know is it's 50 by 70, with then these top sections as 10. And our cutouts as 20. So we're going to number them up one, two, and three. And obviously, hopefully, by this stage, you know that the neutral axis is going to sit in the center. And you can actually work it out if you want to uh, by just taking the areas of one, two, and three and then work out the distance away it is from a datum. So for this, we actually don't need to go that far. Um, because we know it's symmetrical, so it's going to be slap bang in the centre, so we know our centre balance is going to be from that middle section. So, using our second moment of area, which is B, D cubed, D for 12, okay, we're going to work out then what's our second moment of area on this beam. So, I'm just going to imagine this is one big rectangle, Okay, and we're going to use BD's cube. We're going to just put down our basic facts. We know that it's going to be 50 by 70. So 50 by 70. So essentially, what we're saying is this equals uh, 50 is the base or the breadth times 70, which is the depth or the height. Cube, we're going to throw that all over 12. Okay, so that's going to give me a nice grand sum total of 1.43 times 10 to the 6. Okay, this is millimeters. Uh, four. So this is looking at areas. So, so that's going to be my main. So this is a second moment of area of this rectangle here. So, but as we know, we like it with anything. An I beam isn't actually a perfect rectangle. So when you actually take an I beam, like so. Chop it in half. Okay, you kind of get the idea now. But we know that this is just a rectangle with a rectangle cutout. So, what we can actually do is we can then determine what is our second moment of area of doing the figure twice. So, you could actually have a second moment of area. Okay, so BD cubed minus BD cubed. So what we're going to do then is obviously the markup, obviously big B. Okay, and then big D. And you've got little B, which is the inside volume, that way, and that way. And little D, which is that way. So what we can do is exactly the same again. Is that when we now pitch this, we have got 50 times 70, okay, that was in brackets, minus um, our little over to 20, uh, 17, 50, so. Our breadth that way is going to be 20, so the breadth is going to be 40. Mm. 40. 
and that's going to be times by uh, 10, 10, which is 70. I'm going to throw that all over. Oh, 12. So when you put that into a calculator quickly. Okay, 70 minus two tens is not 70, so that's definitely 50. My pen won't hurt even, that's 50. Okay, that's cute. You get an answer here of one point zero one two five times ten to the power of six against millimeters to the power of four. So that's the way you've worked out then our second motive area across our I beam just by taking our two areas and rolling it through so let's look at another quick example here It's a hundred Okay, let's say it has a depth of one fifty, obviously not drawn to scale, you need one scale. Um Has an actual length, potentially not going to this even, and the length of four meters. Okay, what is going to be the second moment of area? Uh, and I'm going to look at um, how much stress it can then sort of hold. So What we're going to do here is we're going to do second amount of area, so I equal prep at cubed in 12. So I'm basically take this one to be 100 by 150 cubed by 12. Give me and it run and so two eight point one two five times ten to the six and again to the millimeter to the power of four okay obviously you can convert that into meters if if you wanted to. Um, in that case, it'd be 2.8 when you convert to meters. So, if we say, okay, we put a tensor into a beam, and R A and R B can support five. Kilo newtons each. Okay, we know that then halfway we're going to have a max force. 
of 10 kilonewtons. So a 10 kilonewton force, and that'll be again across our beam. So max would be at on our midpoint. So what we can do is we can now work out this one. So we can now turn around and say, well, we know that our stress equals our moment by distance over our momentary value or second moment of area. So we know here that our moment It's going to be 10 kilonewtons. Okay, and we know this is going to be all over 28.125. That's going to be times 10 to the power 6. Okay, we know we need to work out our y. Now we know that basically our 5 kilonewtons. And we have five kilonewtons. We know that span is a hundred mil, and we're at the midpoint. This is going to be times naught, uh, not naught, so we'll mil times seventy-five. So what we're going to do is ten kilonewtons times seventy-five, and divide that by twenty-eight point one two five. And this will give the value of 0 0.026666. Now, what we would need to do at this stage is we've done everything in millimeters so far. When you actually convert the numbers, we get, we get the font to 10 kilonewtons. Times 0.075. Can we throw that all over 2.8125 times 10 Let's get the other one. Yeah, times into five. This isn't very good. So this is 28 times into minus six. It's actually easy to do. There's 10 26.667 mega megapascal. So you need to convert to meters to really get you a nicer answer. That's just how you can quickly work out again two quick ways to solve a second moment of area. But actually turn your second moment of area and um, put on a uh, stress, which then you can obviously work out what is the overall, uh, or make a moment to work out the overall stress, and then uh, that beam holds 26.667 megapascals of force.